Hi everyone, it's <clears throat> Ren here. Welcome to my room, guys. I hope you are well today. Today we're going to take a slightly more relaxed route to our subject of inquiry. We're going to talk about three traits that will immediately turn off an INFJ in conversation. The focus is more on a first impression or second impression, you know, not something that, um, not a situation in which you've been interacting with the INMJ type for a while, but more, you know, how to sort of quickly turn them off and, and be tempted not to give you a chance, at least for a while, by your appalling behavior. I'm joking. It's only subjective. But at the end of the day, we're discussing INFJs here. Before I move on, just to remind you that I have written a book on the INFJ type, which you might be interested to pick up if you haven't already. It's called The Ecstatic Soul. It's available down below at... Uh, in the description box, all the links are provided to all the Amazon websites. Ebook, paperback format, less than ten dollars. You have any questions? You ask me. As far as I know, this is the most in-depth in-depth investigation of the INFJ ever conducted. If you're familiar with the basic function stack of the INFJ and you've read some articles online, if you want to get to the next level in your understanding of the INFJ consciousness, this is the way to go. Okay, so is it possible to turn off an INFJ? Oh yes, of course. It's possible to turn them off. It might not be immediately noticed. It might not be something that they manifest to you straight away because INFJs tend to prefer to operate in a smooth manner in a conflict-free environment. It doesn't mean that they will always try to escape conflict. This is sometimes a bit of a cliche said about INFJs, which is not true necessarily. But what is true is that um, they tend to default to... Uh, a non-confrontational mode of addressing problems. So they can be pro quite proactive when it comes to addressing problems, things that they don't like, things that they don't vibe with. You might not immediately notice it. You'll notice it after a while, either because you've been door slammed or more likely because um, you can sense that the INFJ person is not giving you as much of their attention as they had maybe a, a few hours before or a few minutes before. INFJs can change their minds though, so these traits that I'm going to list, I'm only going to focus on three traits are things that you can work on if you <laughs> if your life goal is to um, become friends with an INFJ. Okay, so the first trait that I want to talk about is the trait of not being a good listener. Not being a good listener is a trait that INFJs find very, very annoying and very frustrating. And it can be risky when you're talking to an INFJ to forget about the danger of giving that impression. It can be risky because an INFJ may at first give you the impression that they don't really mind you being a bad listener because they are themselves really good listeners. At least that's what they project. They love listening. They love listening to what you have to say. But there must come a point where they expect to be able to share things in return. And if you do not give them that opportunity, if you, um, if you only, first of all, maybe you won't even let them speak. Uh, in most situations, you will, uh, people will gesture you know uh, giving them the floor but actually not really listen or come across as if they're dying to to go back to what they were talking about without having really listened and certainly without reacting to what the INFJ said and that's the kind of thing that INFJs have raiders for and they they don't like that they tend to find it um, deeply annoying now on the surface you could say that's because they don't like self-centered people um but I think it goes a little bit deeper than that. I think INFJs could, in principle, uh, get on well with people that um, they find otherwise a little bit um, into themselves or people who have, you know, are confident or have a high opinion of themselves. It's a trait that <clears throat> you may or may not want to have, but INFJs would not necessarily be bothered by that if you were, nevertheless, and despite you know, this this kind of high view of yourself that you have, if you are a good listener, if you take them seriously, 
In other words, if you're a candid megalomaniac, you might be okay with an INFJ. But if you're someone who does not listen, it's going to frustrate the INFJ immensely because INFJs listen not for the sake of listening, but because they're always exploring the landscape of a person's thoughts, trying to understand other people. And because of their use of FE, because they have FE carved into their cognitive makeup, they do care about ultimately sharing th those insights in some form or other, more or less indirectly and implicitly with the other person. They don't like to be given a lot of data to explore without then being able to kind of share what they think of it. On the contrary, if you do the exact opposite, if you do give them the opportunity to do that, INFJs will tend to be very attracted to you because you're essentially giving them the freedom to be themselves and you're not judging them for it. You're not giving them the sense that they're violating your boundaries. So that's the first aspect. <clears throat> now, the second aspect is to be close-minded. Um, INFJs will tend to be quite turned off by people who are narrow-minded, close-minded, people who are not willing to entertain different options. Which is why at times INFJs can have a difficulty getting on with certain sensing types who are more likely to display those features. <clears throat> it would be wrong to imagine that the INFJ in this case would be turned off and judge the other person. A little bit like the case of your, you know, egocentric person, self-absorbed person, a person who has a high opinion of themselves. If the person has those traits but is a good listener, INFJ will be fine with it. Um, in the case of someone who is narrow-minded, an INFJ will be quite tolerant of someone who has very different opinion from themselves, but who is nevertheless non-dogmatic. Here, the key function that comes into play is an I, and also we should make room for the agency of TI in facilitating the, facilitating the back and forth, the deliberation. An INFJ just likes to be open to all different kinds of possibilities and discuss issues on their own merits. They like to converse. They like to submit the particular piece of content being discussed to their examining scrutiny. It's also in many respects why INFJs and INTPs get on very well in conversation usually. It's because both types are actually quite at home with the idea of discussing things rationally and putting everything on the table, not uh, opposing something on principle according to particular values or a concern to be authentic to their values here, you would find a significant divergence between INFPs and INFJs, and to some extent, even ENFPs and INFJs, because strong FI users tend to be close to certain topics on principle. I'm not talking about any specific topic. But this is something that they will often refuse to engage in, whereas INFJs tend to be really the least dogmatic and the least one of the most open-minded of all the types, really. In fact, INTJs are also extremely open-minded and that's linked to NI dominance, but because of their use of T, because of their use of FI, and because of a certain posturing of a lot of INTJs online, this is not necessarily the opinion that you're going to have of INTJs at first sight. But in fact, if you get to know an INTJ very well, you know this, you can discuss pretty much anything with them. They'll never make you feel morally judged for it, or at least it's very unlikely. And finally, the trait that I want to uh, wrap, up, wrap this up with, again, if you want to make a terrible impression on an INFJ, if you want to make the worst impression, in addition to not being a good listener, good listener and being close-minded, is if you are aggressive. INFJs just do not like aggressive conversationalists. And when I say an aggressive conversationalist, I don't mean someone who dares to share unpopular opinions, opinions that go against the mass or the majority opinion. In fact, like I said before, I know just being so open-minded, they will like to hear what that person has to say and give them a voice. Again, assuming that this person displays the necessary characteristics of being a good listener and being undogmatic. It's possible to be controversial in one's position, at least from the perspective of the majority, and yet not to be dogmatic. And if you're like that, honestly, an INFJ will usually be a very, very good audience and they will be even more interested because they will want to understand what led you to that 
on popular opinion. They want to understand whether it's worth it, whether they find it convincing, but also what led you to have this particular position, to espouse this particular opinion in the first place. But if you do it aggressively in the sense that it's, it often comes across as if the person says controversial things because they want there to be some kind of argument. A lot of people are turned on by the idea that a conversation could go badly, that uh, hot-blooded people could wake up and exchange um, aggressive words, maybe swear words. There are people who get bored by conversations that are a little bit too well-behaved, rational, respecting certain conventions. There are people who like to go into a conversation like they go into the ring. I'm thinking of types, people belonging to types like ESTP, ENTJ, ESTJ, a lot of T-types, admittedly. It's, just, it's not going to happen with INFJs. If you tell them, well, you know, the, the, the way that you like to, to have conversations is well-behaved and polite, and it's a bit boring, INFJs will be like, so be it. If that's what you think is boring, well then I'm boring and thank you very much uh, and goodbye. Because INFJs find excitement, not necessarily in the form of the conversation, but they like to be usually quite conventional, polite, respecting norms, manners, but in the content. The content is all they care about. So to summarize, if you want to turn off an INFJ at first encounter, you will be a bad listener, you will be aggressive and you will be narrow-minded and if you're none of these things you can have all the opinions you want all the controversial thoughts and irreverent humor you want you should be fine now drop a comment also give me a like and consider subscribing if you enjoyed the content of this video i'll talk to you soon bye bye